now, so good evening everyone. My name's Elvin, also known as Epoxy. It's uh, a little different of a stream than usual. It's uh, actually February 5th, technically, we're streaming this live, but um, for today, we're just going to be doing a semi-cast, semi-VOD review of the uh, Illinois Tech Division A team's game against University of Pikeville. U Pike Esports um, from their match on on the February first. So um, we were able to get the uh, raffle files um, from one of the uh, players earlier this week. So we have downloaded them, processed them, and then now we're just gonna go for the spectate. Just that way we can, you know, put this game onto our onto our YouTube channel and whatnot. So if you are here live watching us, um, appreciate you for showing that loyalty. But again, this is nothing nothing too formal it's just going to be my usual casting um but i'll try to i'll probably fast forward to, through some of the more less lively bits just because this game has already happened and we uh if you're following the sea law you already know what the result is but for those that aren't i guess you're in for a for a treat because this is a spoiler three games all right so <clears throat> i've changed the overlay a little bit so things are looking a little bit wonky supposed to um but besides that i think uh, i'm good to get myself going all right i'm gonna unmute the desktop audio and then jump into the raffle file right now okay so again this is going to be iit versus university of pikeville um illinois tech game one took blue side so we've got true s on the jace divine jungle uh with the zach blitzkrieg vlad mid zayn mf bottom and then boom bang Leona support from Pikeville. We've got Ty Locks on the Darius Halal. I'm just gonna go with that Halal on the uh, Elise Jungle. I am no Jedi on the Pantheon. Paklav, Paklav on the Kaisa, and then Thresh on that support. So, um, without further ado, I'll just get myself started, and then um, again, this is just super casual. So, uh, don't expect as exciting of my cast as usual, but. In any case, let's get it to let's get it started. Um, I mean, only interesting thing of note is Vlad's got the TP mid to start things off, um, and then we've got the uh, red side there. So, uh, shout out to Divine if he ever watches this for giving the advice about spectating uh, with Borderless. So when you watch Raffle Files, now but with, when I switch scenes, it doesn't actually throw off my entire stream. Um, okay. So it looks like both sides do the uh, initial five-man approach, and then, again, just for the sake of uh, going, getting through this time, IIT sends out a ward here. Pantheon does spot it, doesn't take it down. Pikeville responds with the Thresh putting it down by Raptors. A uh, Elise and IIT also does a cover ward. So both sides, two wards it looks like. Keeping their bases checked, but it will be a uh, Zac going for the blue jungle. While uh, Halal and the Elise takes away of that. And has a lens to help get away from that uh, trinket to be able to keep an eye out. MF with the Q going to start things off, already landing a little bit of damage there onto that Thresh, but looking like Pikeville might be just on the upper edge of hitting level 2 first. Um, yeah, there it goes, level 2 advantage there for Pikeville. Blast the Q does land onto Leona, nice flay there. The 4th uh, auto from Kai'Sa going to bring that Leona all the way to almost, uh, how low? 260, yeah, pretty low. Force her to flash out and pop a pot instantly. Probably feel no worse for the wear. Top lane, True and Tylox. Nobody dare to come for a gank at the three minute-ish mark, but Blitzkrieg is going to be taken very low, gets to ignite. Pantheon responds with a flash ignite, does not take him down. Elise will crawl back to her red buff. Divine now though, clearing up this 
blue side of the jungle has not taken the red yet, but is level 3 with the E available if IIT wants to risk it once again. Boom Bang is going to be starting things off, landing a lot of damage. It's going to be Kaisa committing herself for that flash to be able to get the first blood. Divine does not have an E ready at the moment. Kaisa will be able to walk out. They go one for one. So with that knowledge, Elise is going to go start taking these scuttlers of her own. She won't have anybody, anything to invade there on the blue side as Divine has already cleared it. Divine now finishing up his Krugs, probably go with the red buff after. So at least he gets to assist though for the Thresh. Uh, and MF gets to kill, so that also helps things out a little bit for her. Hopefully IIT able to uh, take that to their advantage. But Blitzkrieg walking all the way here in the river, not having the knowledge that the Elise is inside the camp. Maybe getting the drift that a couple of members are outside. The, la the plant will show that Elise is around. Vlad's going to have to walk all the way around here. Blitzkrieg pulls away, but a hungry pantheon with his W available. It's going to look like it's going to force Blitzkrieg to walk, run all the way around the base. He is going to be landing that spear, and that kill will go, in fact, to the Elise with a flash kill secure. So sends the uh, Pikeville members on a little bit of a wild goose chase there, but ends up benefiting them in the end. That Elise is going to have a smite for a nice deal, walking right up to Divine there. Red buff versus red buff is going to be taken pretty low. IIT members hovering around the river, but Elise is just going to walk right back out. So with the first blood, uh, excuse me, with the kill, because Kaisa got the first blood, I believe she's going to get the pickaxe. MF is going to come back with two longswords and a dagger. And already some control wards being placed down onto the map, looking like Pikeville wants to set themselves up here permanently in the bot lane as Zack is going to be having to stick himself here on the uh, with these top camps in the blue jungle. Another hook lands with the flay combo. It's going to actually have Boom Bang flash right in for the Kaisa. That's some ballsy plays there from Boom Bang today. Or from Saturday. That's a better way. So Elise is going to be going for her first back. Um, Zach will probably go for his after he finishes the Gromp. She is going to be a little bit ahead in terms of X. Well, he'll be level 5 after as well, actually, take it back. Once he finishes up this Krug. Yeah, so unfortunately just a little bit behind in terms of timing. Maybe 15, 20 seconds uh, from the Elise. I mean, level 6 ultimate. In terms of Zack, it's definitely going to cause a lot more CC potential if Pikeville's playing for that. It's going to be the Scuttle expiring there on the bot side river as Pikeville goes for their first attempt onto the dragon. This, In this case, an infertile. Zack's going to walk all the way around. He is going to have the knowledge that they are finishing up, and Belize will secure the kill. IIT unable to respond as Boom Bang. Still taken low from that earlier skirmish, but Vlad and Zack want to get themselves started on a fight here. Divine gonna have to flash his way out just to be able to avoid it, but Boom Bang still wanting to force these fights. Not sure about that play. And yeah, not looking too good there for the Hawks as they, uh, a late rotation causes them, causes the Leon to get caught out. No vision either on this Riverside for them. Pikeville already taking two control wards here at the spot. And let's see. I haven't talked too much about top lane, but we're looking to have our first level six fight here. And looks like the Jace keeping even in terms of the CS, uh, I guess, but. You know, against Darius, it's you just get in range of that axe, and you could be in some big trouble. Leona, though, dying two times is going to have her significantly behind from the Thresh. That Thresh is almost going to be a full level, actually. In fact, almost going to hit six after with one more wave from the bot side. So, Leona now just hitting five. MF does have the six available, um, but... 
an E from the uh, make it rain from the from the MF going to delay the thresh back just a little bit. They are doing some ward maintenance, cleaning up the jungle. But it's Krieger though. It's going to be meeting the Darius and Pantheon, but the pool will keep him safe. Pikeville, with the knowledge that Divine is now clearing up that Gromp, he will be able to hit level 6 off this still. Um, but at least, you know, starting to show a little bit ahead uh, with the dragon, with the. Uh, you know, just clearing the camps a little bit faster. Divine, though, is still always looking for initiatives. He is going to be here. And Tylox does not have any knowledge that they're looking for an engage, but he commits for the grab. Going to try to see what they can f force themselves in, but that's not going to be enough damage, unfortunately. Elisto on the top side here, level 6 with items, with the Stalker Blades, Runic Echoes, and they are pinging to go for this fight. True is going to be available, not with his flash, with his flash, but not going to be able to get the kills, and Pantheon there with his ultimate as well. Helps uh, turn that initial 2v1 into the 3v2 advantage for Pikeville. Pikeville leads 5-1 at the 10 minute mark, 2k gold lead. So that at least, already with a bit of that shutdown gold, having a really high impact in the game for her team. Um, and then yeah, you know, IIT not really going to have an option to go look for any kind of potential 2v2, I think, just with how behind that they have put that Leona. It's going to be a flash from the Elise to try to see if she can get something. The Cocoon going to land a flash from the Vladimir to avoid the Pantheon Spear, and he's going to have to back right off. Yeah, Elise all over the map in this case. Divine going to have to try as hard as to catch back up as he's almost a full level behind uh, from Elise. And it's got to be at least like 1.K? Yeah. one one eh, A little under 1K. Zack is going to be available. The uh, damage from MF ult is going to clear Elise right through. That's going to definitely help things out with a little bit of shutdown gold there. Two kills there as well for Zayn. And IIT, quick to respond. Well played for their Hawks right there. And Pantheon unable to help as he had used his ultimate earlier in the top lane. Uh, let's uh, the bot lane have some signs of life in IIT's favor. It's going to be a flash initiation to just do their best to keep that Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa selfishly staying near the uh, turret range. And IIT quick to respond in kind. That's going to help them at least get two or three turret plates here for them as well as there's only about three minutes left of the turret plating available. Boomin going to take a couple shots from the turret. Uh, looking like they still want to commit for some plates, but uh, Thresh Hook not going to land on a minion. IIT going to walk back out, it looks like. Pantheon hovering about, but no ultimate still. 45 seconds left for that. Ty Lock's going to be going for that Herald on his own. He's going to have a decent amount of time, but the timing might not be in IIT's advantage, as Spotlight's going to have to back with MF getting all of those kills, but will not be available to go for this Cloud Drake. It's going to be members of IIT jumping right into here as they are committing a lot there. The stun from Leona going to keep him in place. Five members of IIT there to collapse, but the Elise and the Thresh and the Kaiser are going to secure that Cloud Drake for themselves. So, things being taken away from the map all over the place, but IIT though, now in the lead. And bringing the kill count even with a 5-5, but Divine pushing himself all the way inside the base. It's just going to be pushing that Elise away. Give a chance for Vlad to secure a tower plate of his own. There it goes. First one to fall. Top lane hasn't fallen yet. I think top lane for True has had one plate fallen. So, um, you know, bot lane's about the same though throughout. But with this back and a bunch of those kills to her name, MF is going to have a bounty for herself. She's going to have the Essence Reaver and a Pickaxe. So, the damage is there for sure. Now will she have her teammates be able to support and back her up to keep her safe to provide all of those, uh, all that damage that she needs. At least topside though, it's going to be looking like she might be looking for an invade. They are going to know that they 
might have seen a Zac earlier. Not sure about where that word placement intention was, but they are hovering around it, so they are gonna know something's up here. Pings here from Vlad and Jace that they got the idea that, you know, something's wrong, but looking like Pikeville had to read on the Hawks there, knowing that the Zac's gotta be around the area and Pikeville not falling for it either, as the Kaisa had already backed all the way back and we'll have Divine just wasting time here, unfortunately, for them. Yeah, I don't agree with that play at all. I think they're trying to force, trying to shut their shut Kaiser the hardest down. But you know, it's the attempt to try to go for a first tower, because with this Rift Herald, you know, could be put top lane to maybe push them in a bigger favor. But yeah, again, Zach committing a lot of resources. The stun is going to fall through. The lantern's going to catch. And yeah, this is a very dangerous play. Nice cleanse for the MF to get away. But the CC, in fact, does not let her channel her ult, and they're going one for one here. Divine gonna have to try to do some quick thinking to get himself out of that situation. Boom bang, already a goner in that case. Will Blitzkrieg be the next one? It's going to be a flash from the Darius to be able to get the swipe on him. A little bit of fast footwork is going to have to be available. He's gonna plant himself right out. Zach walks away, but IIT bites off more than they can chew. You know, only getting one kill in response to Pikeville's three. Bot lane committing for that dive way too hard, I think, you know, could be maybe a, a, a call to try to see if they can secure, just put everything on the MF if possible, but, you know, the timing is just not there in, in, that fa in their favor at all for that. MF is going to be ahead, but... In a team sense, it's going to be first tower falling there uh, f for finally for Jace. At least we'll get it here in the mid. Oh, excuse me, in the bottom. So hold on, we still got fighting going on. Zan, nice stun there from from the Leona. Let's uh, Zan instantly pop her off, and Boobank still chasing the Kaisa. And yeah, a flash play from Delisa try to just chunk cut down that Zion. Still keeps himself pretty healthy. I don't like a Ginsu's. It's gotta be, right? Spellbook. Recurve. Mm, IIT though, finally going to commit themselves and looks like they'll finally get a tower of their own to bring it up to two and two in terms of the turret count. And Zach's still around trying to just do what he can to help push this bot lane lead as far as possible. Looking like they've already committed themselves to putting mid lane as a lost cause. Unfortunately, 2k Goldie, that's going to take a while for him to catch back up to be useful in any kind of team fight. It's going to be the stun ultimate from Leona, not going to be landing at all. And uh, un an unfortunate whiff for sure, but um, it is forgiving with the Leona cooldown. Uh, no Cloud Drake to help that though. Unfortunately, another dragon looks like it may be spawning soon. A minute to the respawn, it looks like, and um, hmm. you know that's gonna probably be pretty important to try to see if the hawks can try to take that away before the mount the soul makes an opportunity for itself. You know. Jace doing what he can to keep up with the Darius. Uh, does have an item to his belt with that Sanguine Blade. Will help with the wave clear, as of course, but Darius without the TP is going to be walking all the way down to try to see if to be able to contend for that dragon fight. Jace is going to have a TP of his own. I'm not sure about this play, you know, if you've got the TP, use that to your advantage. But no members willing to pull the trigger right as of yet. Nope, it's going to be at least starting it off here. This will be a Mountain Dragon contention. Pikeville has set up the wards where they need to, though. And they're going to know, not going to have the information that Darius and the Pantheon are inside there. MF all the way in the bottom and is showing it. They're going to have them know that it's a 4v5 fight. And this fight does not start off well at all. Divine trying to do what he can from the back line. Still pretty healthy. Ayatito still being able to pull it off. 
And that's going to be channeling almost a full extent of her ult, and what a misplay from the Pikeville from Kentucky there. Hold on, let's take a look at another, because I guess the fighting... Yeah, so what I see here, two members here ready for the flank, three members here in the bot, MF is in the bot lane. They know that Divine's around here, so they just have to bring out the dragon to the point where... Or for, his only way of getting over is going to be through his E. And then what? So they don't have knowledge that he, they're inside here. But they're just pulling out the dragon. Still, both of them really healthy here. It must have been a dive on the Kaiser or something. And then just completely ignore the damage. Yeah, so Leona gets caught here. Divine going with the E... Uh, true and it's seriously 2v1 disadvantage though but does have to damage with the sanguine blade to take that at least pretty low so he is going to flash right out of that fight nice stun on the kaisa definitely stops some of that damage okay so it's just three different three different interactions all at the same time thank god that no one touched the mf they i think they already used all of their cc and kaisa yeah, non-existent in that fight Blitzkrieg trying to do what he can to save, get the Kai'Sa, okay. Alright, I see, okay, so, yeah, Pikeville just, uh, they were committing, the two of the, two of the members of their strongest members, the top and the, and the, uh, Pantheon, committing for that, uh, Vlad, he's gonna flash himself right out, be out of the fight, but in the meantime, the super low members from, or squishy members, Elise and Kai'Sa, get instantly negated by that true Jace damage, and, you know, he's keeping to pace with Darius, you know. In the 1v1, he might not be as confident, but, yeah, those items are going to help him secure that bag, for sure. So, looking like IIT's going to be able to secure Drake for himself here. Going to be true and Blitzkrieg and MF there for it. And, yeah, the lead goes back there into Hawk's favor. Another fight like that will definitely put them in a comfortable lead for sure, but it's still Pikeville has chances to come back, you know. Um, Kaisa still a ways behind as MF is getting all of the kills in her name, so now 2k in terms of the gold lead. And Elise, she's got items, but oh my god, these 1v1s. Sorry. So Boombang gonna flash out once again. These engages from Boombang with that Leona are just. I don't know, man. You gotta be. You gotta. You gotta. You got that itchy trigger, tr trigger finger that's gonna bite you in the back eventually, I think. You know, forcing the flash out there. True. Got a little bit of life steal, but gets caught by the Darius and it's going for that 1v1 divine there to help things out. Nice little knock up there. Will be there conveniently to get true and a red buff. Or did he have it earlier? Uh. Maybe. No, 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 he didn't. He, he already had it in the fight. My apologies. A little bit of a lane switch up as we see here. It's going to be MF there in the mid lane. Nice little sidestep from Leona to avoid the Thresh hook. And still going for these engages. So Divine gonna not have a knockup available. Does land a Q onto Thresh, but nothing else to grab onto. Chuas going for some fights of his own. Divine going to be trying to ult the members out. The damage is there from True, but he dives too far. Takes one too many turret shots, and MF damage is going to have her flash right back out. But Pantheon's damage is there to finish off the Leono. Kaisa and MF not there. The passive there going to be started. I'm going to try to see what they can do to save these guys out, but Blitzkrieg gonna be wreaking havoc in the back line. That's a prime spot for her, uh, Blitzkrieg to turn on if he had the items, but no, it's going to be a ace there for Pikeville as they retake the lead there and bring the kill count even. Kaisa being able to live through all of that fight is gonna definitely help her get some gold as well. Help her as she gets that build towards completion with the, uh, with the Ginsu's in mind. Alright, let's take a quick fast forward to see what's going on. Reverse backing, looking like Baron's going to be the next thing in their sights. Ward's gonna catch out the leash, she's gonna have to walk all the way back to go for a safe back. 
Thresh pointing out some cautionary wards. Leona doing the same on the opposite side. And three members top there is going to continue to delay that at least. She's going to net herself 30 gold with the uh, control ward. And in all of that meantime, it's going to be, uh, I believe, the final the first tier mid. Tier 1 falling there as the members were showing top. Another dragon respawning. Looks like that'll be the next big fight. I believe. Darius going to be topside with his TP available. Jace as well. And, J and True sending out a decent amount of damage with now the Yomus as well. Along with the Sanguine to do tons of damage. IIT does not have coverage inside the Dragon Pit itself. But um, on the opposite hand, Pikeville also does not know where the Hawks members are as of yet. They're going to see that the Darius is pushing himself topside. Again, a Mountain Dragon now showing here as IIT starts it up. It will be the Jace here to help secure that for them as Tylox is going to respond by taking the Tier 1 mid, tier one top. And looking like that will be the end of the trade. So Pikeville forfeits the Dragon in exchange for Pikeville's third tower. So keeping themselves even with the objectives, you know, one for one kind of thing. And yeah, still showing a little bit of a gold lead there. Really, it's all just in one big team fight. It's going to be Divine starting it off, going to be getting nice root up onto pack left. But the damage is going to be followed up here with IIT, getting that damage onto the Thresh. She's going to be stunned by it, at least to stop anything more. No members falling yet. Divine going to be taken dangerously low. No passive either from the earlier fight. He is going to be able to dash right out, but Leona ease right over, and he does not have the help from the Hawks for that. Uh, she's going to walk out, though. No more follow-up from Pikeville. And IIT ends up coming out ahead of the fight with a quick couple elims on the uh, bot side. From, from the bot lane, excuse me. MF. And Blitzkrieg pushing up this spot lane here to give up for the tier 2 bot. Uh, and true, yeah. Now having uh, some real impact to the squishies for uh, with that build in mind. Definitely going to be an issue for the Elise and the Kai'Sa. In terms of comp, yeah, I think... I think IIT comes out at just just ahead in terms of the comp. They've got the CC, they've got the engage potential. And as long as the Divine continues to build super tanky, maybe a uh, uh I don't know about Spirit Visage, maybe like a I mean honestly maybe even Knight's Foul. But I uh, know Leona's going going for that. I'm not sure what the Kindle gem will be used for here, but Warmox maybe if I had to guess. He's already at uh, 2.7, so he'll definitely be able to get the guaranteed health regen if he's going for that build. Jace will take that blue buff for himself. Will help him a little bit with that split push. And a little bit of a lull in, uh, in the game, to be quite honest. So I'm just going to go for some fast forwarding. A little bit of a dance here as they fight for Division. They are not going to be able to capture that ward right here. So, But this situation looks pretty familiar, though, as Zach once again dives himself in for the fight. Is going to use his ult. It's going to take a while for that to come back. Ready for a big team fight, though. But during that time, it gives the members the knowledge to get, get a start onto the Baron. And they will know that it's... Uh, being started as that ward does not is not captured from the uh, from the control ward there that's put by uh, I don't know I assume Leona. Um, putting a control ward of all things on top of it. But Krieg though trying to see what he can do in terms of uh, gold. He's pretty much a full item behind from this pantheon unfortunately, so he's gonna probably need another one. He's just gonna. He's going to need to be in team fights to be able to, you know, attract the squishies for sure. You know, Vlad will still have that potential, but in terms of a full-on team fight, I don't know if it's going to be able to last that long against against those kind of tanks. No MR being built yet either. Uh, no, Thresh is going for Zeke's or Locket. Uh, 
So I don't know. You know, given the opportunity at the time, Vlad will definitely be able to be pretty useful by probably by like the 35, 40 minute mark for sure. But does the game go that long? I have no clue. Uh, so another bit of a lull here. True, gonna obliterate that tower in mere seconds though. Um, and actually, speaking of uh, yeah, obliteration, we might be seeing the obliteration of the dragon coming up. It will be a divine starting things off, getting a nice little bit of a knock up there onto at least in Thresh. Hold on, let's let's actually replay that and uh, do a play by play. My fault. Went too fast. Okay, so forces the Elise to flash out, but with the Thresh is there to follow up. MF is in a nice place to be able to start landing some damage, but they are kind of in a pinch. Pantheon non existent in that fight, actually. But Scintilla lands the hook. It's going to force the stopwatch from Xan, try to see what they can do to keep her alive. But the Axe Cleaver is going to be finally followed up. True, gonna go on a 1v1 there against the Kaiser. He should be able to get the kill on her. But the fight here, IIT, looking like they're gonna have to try to chase onto that Elise. Vlad should be able to get the kill. Boombay's gonna have to flash right out. The Legion touches her from Elise. True now here trying to finally save the day, but nice little bit of shield there from Pantheon, but looking like the Hawks will be able to outplay that. So it's taken very low, actually. Another stopwatch being used. Oh my goodness, what a close fight. Pantheon's damage will be there. Blitzkrieg needs to be able to help get the kills, but it's not going to fall through. And unless Divine can pull off some sort of miracle play, I don't think he'll be able to make it through. Passive will instantly get removed, and... Man, that's an unfortunate catch, you know. IIT, you know, the fight starts with uh, Zach going all in, looking like they can start out to fight well, but, you know, MF going to have to walk all the way around, gets put in a pinch between... Darius coming in from the top, Pantheon all coming right in, and then the Thresh hook as well, landing off. That's gotta be, that's gotta be on, uh, it's gotta be Leona's responsibility to take that, because Jace definitely can't, he's going on to Kai'Sa, and Zack's job is to just be everywhere in the map, so he can't be babysitting the MF in terms of CC, he's gotta be the one that's delivering the CC. Leona's CC has to be targeted towards people, people aiming at Leona. Uh, people aiming at MF, I think, uh, to be to be useful in this kind of big, kind of all around the map skirmish. That's an, that's an unfortunate uh, setup for the Hawks to be able to get it. So it looks like Mountain Dra Th Dragon going to be secured there for them. And so what are we going to see next? This is a close game between these two schools, you know. It's pretty exciting. I think we played them once last year. I think we won, but looking like the, their team has uh, been reformed and reshaped and comes out on top of our team that also got reformed and reshaped this year. So, Control Ward there from uh, Boombang is going to be finally capturing the uh, this lone ward here, so we'll be denying division there for them. True, going to be poking a little bit of damage out, try to spy out the Elise. He's going to secure another blue buff for himself. And again, just fast forwarding just because this is not live. So just both lanes just trying to push out where they can. Put some pressure on the side lanes. Blitzkrieg and Darius still going at it. And he's going to have to have to force himself to hex himself right out of the fight. As he's just... That split push potential from him is so strong. With the TP available, they are going to look like they want to get themselves started on that Baron. There are going to be a control ward available for them if they want to keep committing themselves. But Darius has got to be in this fight if he wants to get it started. It's going to be the Lantern seeing that the fight is at 3k of the Baron. CC getting itself started. Nice thunder to hold the Thresh in place. And that MF damage is going to force the Thresh to go right back out. Pikeville Pantheon trying to dive right onto the MF with the Elise, and they're going to be taken very low, but she's got a GA to her name, and she's going to have the damage to follow up with it. In fact, Darius not going to be in that fight. Kai's going to be taken again in a 1v1 situation against uh, True. Has the Hawks come out advantage in... comes out with the advantage in that fight. And True going to be eliminated, actually, as well as they are putting the 
resource essence that they can onto the Pantheon. GA is going to be available though. Nice 1k shutdown. Good lord. 700. Yeah, 1k shutdown with 700 plus the kill. Nice little bit of kiting from Zan, but he'll be fine with the uh, he'll be fine with the GA still on his name. So, IIT quick to respond in kind. Nice TP play there, I believe, from Vlad earlier. Both Tylox and Vlad TPing for that, but the setup from the Hawks there keeps Zan healthy for sure. And again, true, the, the true constantly denying that Kaiser to be able to turn on in that fight. So. Again, the comp playing out in IIT's advantage here, for sure. It's going to be three members being able to uh, have the Baron buff to them, Boom Bang, MF, and the Zac. Let's see what they can do with this advantage. Again, we're just going to go for the 2x speed. She's going to glide right back up. Looks like they want to just push it through the bottom lane. Dragon's not going to be for another few minutes. Uh, let's just try to take whatever advantages they can. Oh no, we have a DC Pantheon and a DC Elise. And the DC Darius, oh my lord. If I was... Alright, well that's... Uh, let's hope that was a technical error. Or you're just like, you know what, this bot lane, I can't handle it, we're, we're leaving. <laughs> nah, probably. I think I I was... I remember getting DMs from some of the guys about how they had a technical. Uh, but, you know, all the members here in the bot lane are going to be shown. Uh, but IIT is going to just be confident in pushing themselves for the towers. Uh, but we'll push themselves right back out. Blitzkrieg here available is going to get the stun and take a decent amount of damage from the lease. As they're playing around this dragon trying to see what they can cut off, but IIT needs to likely make a strong commitment for an objective here to try to take whatever advantage that they can. So, looks like Zack is available just to hold them at bay. Minions will do the work for them to push things off the fight. Getting started, they will be four dragons to get the soul for them. But, True going to be taken down. Kaisa's still alive. Could have the chance for her to turn on as Zan is going to have to deal with that Darius in a 1v1 situation. It's going to be MF channeling the full extent of her old Darius damage not being able to come in through. She's going to be instantly eliminating the uh, Elise. And end up 1v1, Zayn might actually come on in this fight. It's going to be the GA being popped. Uh, I don't know. Leona's going to be able to kill the Kaisa, but unfortunately, still too many members alive for uh, for Pikeville to be able to handle. And that's going to be the Baron buff expired because they're all dead. That sucks. Uh, looking like they're pushing their way towards the tier 2 mid, though, in response with, you know, 20 second death timers. There's gonna be another DC from, uh, good lord. Oh, and now Kaiselis, too. Alright, so looking like Pikeville's got some technical issues that they gotta deal with. But it's all for good because this is a replay, so that's the advantage of the, uh, haha. Oh my god, these guys. Oh my god, these guys. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. Looking like IIT still still playing for it. They can't they can't afford to give it up. Did they just give up game one? They must. Yeah, no members able to respond, no no members coming out the gate. And all members just gotta try to for the last push, but looking like all of the pauses have expired or whatever, but it's going to be MF just blasting herself with the ult, trying to dive their way. Cleanse gonna be used to avoid the Darius. It's not gonna have a cleanse for the Pantheon ult. He's going in for a 1v1. Needs to have the damage there to help him out. Zayn's not gonna have a GA to his name. Gonna have a little bit of the red buff to keep himself alive. Divine's gonna have to cut himself right back out. Finally, the MF able to push herself through, and looking like that's got to be the game for sure. An unfortunate uh, setting for Pikeville as they Lo losing to technical error is uh, one of the most frustrating things for sure. So, but in the act of good sportsmanship, I think IIT tried their best to accommodate, but they're gonna have to deal with this game one loss. All right. 
So Hawks take game one, 28-27. 71 k gold lead to 67 k gold lead. Right. 71 k gold lead against 67, excuse me. So, uh, taking ourselves back into pick bound. It's going to be IT taking a game one there off from the from Pikeville, but Let's get ourselves right into game two. I don't get the chance to do any analysis of the analysis of the game like with endgame screens as these are raffle files, so we're just gonna jump right into it. Game two. Um with excuse me. Where's the Tech scores, yeah. So IIT leads the series 1 and 0. Pikeville will now be on the blue side. IIT on the red, looks like. And so before we get it started, looking like the picks are going to be Darius on the Tylock. Tylock's on Darius once again. Graves jungle now. Jedi Echo. He's got to have a Jedi skin like E. Pack Clav on the Caitlyn. Morgana support. True on the Akali top. Divine with Iver jungle. Blitzkrieg on the Katzadin. Zayn now on. Kaisa and Boom Bang once again on the Leona. Yeah, that Leona. Saving Grace or unsaving Grace? Time will tell. Alright. Let's do a quick fast forward, just get ourselves right into the game. Both members going for another five man extension, but everyone's gonna walk right into good god. He might have to f doesn't hold good discipline to hold on to the flash. Doesn't have to use it, but gonna have to back all the way. Won't need a leash though, as uh, it's everyone. So, camps are will be his friends. IIT hovering around the tri bush, but they will be spotted by that tri, uh, tri bush ward. Remember, Stair hovering around the red jungle. IIT, and it's going to be Ivern helping things out with the red buff. Grace will be able to secure the Krugs there, level 2, and they're going to know, and that's Grace is going to be around. For a first blood, in fact. So, Zan. Gonna have to back and gonna lose almost pretty much two entire waves. It's gonna be putting a pretty big disadvantage there. You know, with that knowledge, you, you gotta know, like, when you're playing Ever Jungle, it's not like they don't know. Uh, Pikeville's, Pikeville's got the uh, good game knowledge there to keep in mind that, you know, IIT was gonna try to cheese something of the sort. Uh, gonna see a bit of laning phase here. And again, doesn't look like anything's happening as of yet, so... Uh... Aaron going to be going for the Scuttle. It's gonna be spotted by Divine as he's done a uh, full clear. A 1v1 situation. I don't know who wins on that front. It's going to be Cassidy getting stuck there with the red buff as well. Shield there to try to keep him as healthy as possible. Boom Bang is going to be there with a uh, follow-up kill there to be able to get it onto the graves. And that's going to be Leona with the red buff, perhaps? No, maybe not. Looks like the buff had already expired by the time. But Kaisa going to have some much-needed alone time for sure uh, to get that. Uh... Capture as many ways as possible, but True falls to a 1v1 against the Darius. Take a quick rewind. It's just... Oh, man. Oh, man. That's the worst. 17, and one more tick will do it. Tylox on that Darius. Bringing the battle into their favor. It's going to be a Kali trying to TP back. Game will settle for a bit, I believe. Ray's going to be going for the scuttle of his own on the top side. Divine doing his dutiful duties and keeping checks on the jungle camps. Going to get the first back with Moby Boots to run around the map much faster for those jungle clears. And IIT, unfortunately, with that you know really big delay, is going to have Caitlyn, in fact, double the CS of uh, the Kai'Sa. It's going to have her in a pretty uncomfortable position, probably, for the, until at least level 6. Divine doing what he can to try to keep up in terms of the jungle XP with the Moby Boots, just try to get around the map as fast as possible. But first dragon looking like it's going to be secured. It's going to be a mountain drag there for Halal. 
everyone around the area, but his team unable to follow up as they had just gone for their back. And Cloak of Agility being used, in fact, for the Kai'Sa. Gonna try to commit themselves to stun, going to be landing onto the Echo. He's gonna have to force himself to flash right out. Level 6 Kassadin's gonna flash. One more auto will do it. But, oh my god, the Kassadin. No one, nobody falls, but uh, pretty close, forcing Divine to flash out of that potentially hairy situation. Another 1v1, it looks like, onto the Akali versus Darius. The damage will go through. True will be able to finally get the upper edge of that. But the... Oh my. That's a... That's a pretty giveaway ult there. TP, you know... Not sure about that call. Oh my. You know, I don't think he knew that Divine was there, but... Maybe? I don't know if Halal wins that 2v1. I think, I think so. Huh, weird call. Alright. Game's gonna get itself going here a bit. Members pushing themselves out. It's gonna go for the uh, scuttle of their own. IIT gonna secure it, looks like. And that'll go to Kaisa. That'll help her a bit. And as we are approaching the level 6 boundary, it's going to be, you know, actually, Caitlyn and Kaisa finally catching up in terms of XP. So that's good. Uh, for, for IIT, at least, in terms of level 6 potential. Blitzkrieg trying to do what he can against the Echo, but uh, Echo is pulling up slightly ahead with a bit of a CS lead. Divine pretty close to getting to level 6 for sure. And Graves will be also, uh, will actually be just behind the Ivern, so it Daisy, uh, Divine getting the lead now in terms of the jungle level difference uh, between the two. And true, you know, looking like this is going to be a pretty close 1v1 that so we're going to see constantly between the top lane in terms of just fighting potential. They're just going to be pushing the lane though where you can, trying to put out whatever damage you can as that Triforce is starting to be completed. Blitzkrieg still getting harassed by the Echo as he pushes up that wave. And there is going to be a control word to spot if the Ivern commits for this. But looking like... They're good and uh, Divine is going to be caught up by the ward. They will know something is up. And just do another fast forward if we're not seeing too much action happen yet. Uh... 1v1 here. Oh, that's taken pretty close. Okay. Yeah. Almost for a full minute of the lanes being the same spot. Hold on. Kai's taken very low. That could be enough damage to go through. The Ignite is going to follow up with it. And a unfortunate play there is going to have the uh, Zayn just get instantly shot down by the, uh, by the Morgana Q binding and Caitlyn Trap with the Ignite to follow up. And that's unfortunate. Looking like a second dragon's gonna be coming up soon. Uh, Halal finishing up that scuttle. Won't have any camps there in the bot side, so it's gonna, it's gonna stay around. Enjoy the company a bit. And finally, as the dragon spawns, they're gonna go right at it. However, IIT not gonna give it away that easy as Daisy gets launched. That's going to be another objective that's going to be TP there from the Akali, actually. And True's going to be in that fight as well. Halal taken very low. It's going to be the blue, the dragon being taken by the Echo Boom Blitzkrieg, following all the way up against that Caitlyn. He's going to be going into that 1v1. He is going to fall down. The Zan is going to have to force him to flash out, but Morgana will follow it up. Tyre Lox is going to be coming into the fight here against True. He's going to be forcing him to flash out. Blitzkrieg is going to have to ult himself out. And the fight looks like it and potentially divine's gonna be available hold on we're gonna in a tight spot as she does get caught out and looking like pikeville bites a little bit more than they can chew but blitzkrieg now wanting to fight here for his team and able to get a couple of good picks here rage is gonna come back from respawn after being eliminated i think at the dragon pit but i think that's gonna be all so a couple kills there in iit's favor but now two dragons to uh, Mountain and Cloud there for Pikeville. It's going to have actually an even in terms of gold. 
pretty much. IIT maybe with a slight lead. Yeah, Cassidy getting some much needed kills there for sure. Couple of autos being traded between the two. Another turret plate looks like it's going to be secured for Pikeville. Only about a minute left for it. And IIT is committed for this fight as the ult lands, but the damage is not there. And the CC ability uh, from, from Morgana, from Caitlyn, is enough to keep her at bay. Uh, they're trying to commit, but the damage is not going to be there from, uh, from the Leona. And Ivern in, in that kind of manner, for sure. So, I believe that Boombang had used his uh, his Q stun onto the Morgana because the Black Shield was on the Caitlyn. She got stunned by the Leona ult, but the, but the Black Shield, after being applied, would have ensured that the Leona stun would not go through, so she committed towards Morgana. But, does not have the damage, unfortunately, to follow up with a Kai'Sa, even with her ulting in. It's not going to be able to last against that, unfortunately, with the uh, BF and Pickaxe. And now also an IE with that back in mind. Mm. Turret plating finally falls. Kali keeps true to hers. Darius keeps true to his. Cassidy takes a couple chunks. Echo doesn't goes mostly untouched. So yeah, uh, Pikeville definitely had in terms of tur turret plating. Uh, which lets them keep themselves right into the game as they go for an engage here. Echo vs. Cassidy. It's looking pretty close. Well, it's going to be looking like another fight again as Caitlyn and Morgana. This duo is just looking nasty. That ult damage is barely going to be there. Oh my lord. Oh my goodness. Whew. It's going to be Graves here to help get things started. And they're going to be able to commit themselves for this first turret. Boom is going to be taken very low, actually. The uh, shield from Divine and the uh, W from Leona, though, going to keep her healthy against that Graves ult to the face. So no kills to walk away from that, but that will be first tower for uh, Pikeville. <laughs> True. <laughs> Sending out the Hex just to send that Darius a message, being like, hey, look who's winning this 1v1 now, kid. Uh, I, I may, maybe. It's got some items to her belt to be confident about that, but Divine wants to go in that full-on 1v1 against the Graves. The damage is kind of there, honestly. You know, Aerie is actually doing itself some work, but... Oh no, the Daisy! Still looking at the fight, though. Uh, Daisy will finally fall. Uh, Divine, yeah, is, is showing... Is ahead in terms of jungle XP, right? But... He needs his team in order to be able to provide the damage for the fights for sure. It is going to be now finally the Ocean Drake spawning. Not sure who's going to be here for that. Akali's going to have to walk all the way for that. Four members of the Hawks here, but Pikeville going to be here to finally converge. And that's going to be Leona being taken very low. And she's going to have to flash herself right out. Blitzkrieg. When he's trying to be going in, it's going to be caught by the damage. One more ult will be able to do it. Nice ult to get himself out, but two members slow with Pikeville here to catch up. Are going to be pushed right back out of their jungle. Graves going to be confidently flashing himself in. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, the the three the three v five three v four excuse me situation. You know, bot lane for Pikeville holds out strong on their own for sure. And a much different change of pace all over in terms of lanes, right? You know, bot lane now for Pikeville coming up big. And then, um, whereas mid lane on the Vlad game one was having a hard time. Now he's, you know, helping helping out with some kills earlier. And then, um, you know, we're going to have to see. You know, different change of pace for sure. Maybe it could be the bot lane meta that gives Pikeville a victory here. Um... Reaching that mid-game phase now, right? Where most of these guys have got two-ish items to their uh, to their name. It's going to be even with that Ardent Sensor to help out for his shield. Chow is probably going to be the uh, Athenes, right? It's got to be, I think. Maybe Mikhail's if you're, like, really ballsy. I don't remember if Mikhail's builds with, uh, 
with Chalice. It's going to be true. Actually, going for a 1v1 as they want to commit onto this Caitlyn. The damage is going to be there as she finally falls. Divine going to have to walk himself all the way back out. But three members now top. Divine going to be sending his ult out against a couple members. Going to have to resolve come through there for the Morgana. I don't know if that rune's intentional. If, if it is, that's really interesting because I thought Morgana's just supposed to go for like sorcery stuff. Fascinating. In any case, it's gonna all of this action here in the top side is gonna give Zayn some free breathing room to catch back up with Caitlyn to try to try to get some items of her own. But Boombang once again going in too deep. I don't think he's gonna have the help that he needs. It's gonna fall down to the graves. Blitzkrieg though wants to commit for it, and Echo's gonna rewind all the way back. True. Being taken too low here is going to have to force himself to run as fast as possible. He is going to flash wait. Follows up with an E. They still want to be fighting. The Graves will fall, but Tylox here all the way from the back line is going to be captured. Blitzkrieg going to have to try to do what he can, but that is a fairly menacing Darius with the Triforce completed. Couple kills there to return two for two there in the top side. And they're keeping even nine for nine. These are some tight games. This is a pr really good matches for the Hawks. If anything, after this game, they should be scrim partners or something. It's pretty good. I like it. Uh, Alright, let's see. Get ourselves forward with some action. Gonna be the scuttle. Going to be, you know, only one turret being taken, therefore, in favor of Pikeville. IIT has yet to crack open any yet. Mid and top still pretty strong. Only bot lane's the real chance of it. Um... We didn't see any heralds either, right? Being uh, used. So this is a much different kind of pacing than the uh, than the huge objectives all over and a lot of a lot of things being taken away from the map. But Echo pushing himself up here into top lane. It's going to be Leona caught out by a Morgana Q. Ooh. Excuse me. Looking like Divine tried to get a catch onto the Graves, but. Um, during that, they finally crack open with the mid turret now. Pikeville rotating around the map, looking like they want to set up some vision around the dragon as it is spawning within like a next minute or so. But IIT wants to respond in kind by taking the tier 2 mid. Theirs is going to be splitting the top wave a little bit. No more going to be taken here for the Hawks, but it is going to be IIT trying to push forward here with Boombang instantly falling quickly from the fight here. It's going to be Morgana holding on with the Zonias. That damage is not going to be coming through. Echo now ready to respond, but True wants to fight on his own. He's not going to. He's going to be instantly taken out. Blitzkrieg is going to be next as well. The damage is not there to follow up. The shielding is not there from Divine to be able to help things out. The Flash actually is going to be catching out the uh, the Ivern. In fact, not sure about why they still want to stay around for that. Just just walk away from that as the fight's instantly over. But. It's going to be the fourth dragon, actually, now going in favor for Pikeville, so that will be able to secure them the Ocean Soul for mass amounts of health and mana regen. So, they're going to instantly transition that with the Baroness, the members are still dead, uh, with only Divine able to contest. Uh, will not be able to reach that in time, it looks like. 3k health, Boom Bang is going to be around, but... Uh, going to have some harass with Echo. He's going to ult right back out. None the worse for wear. So IIT finally cracks open the base, but four dragons and a Baron is going to have now the lead being pushed substantially in Pikeville's favor with a 5k lead. And unfortunately, Kai'Sa being put, you know, so significantly behind. Oh my lord. Gets caught with the uh, Morgana Q. Again, this Morgana is nutty. In terms of landing those skill shots that they need. You know that? That CC chaining providing seeming to be a pretty big nuisance for Boombang and saying that this game too, the traps, the Q, and then also the tri the the tri bush, uh, first blood being being taken away. You know, definitely, definitely got to be a less hopefully a lesson that the Hawks learn about. You know, in terms of in terms of that laning phase potential, in terms of the uh, jungling awareness uh, for sure. So they are going to be cracking open their nexus, looking like they're rotating here for the tier two. I think we know. I think we both know, or we all know, as the audience, where this is probably going to be going. Cracking open the base. Daisy's going to try to do what she can. 
IIT is going to commit themselves for one more fight, thinking that they know that they can't risk losing any more Nexus turrets at this stage of the game, but Kassin is not going to be in that fight at all. Kali is going to be taken out, and the uneven fight will continue here for the Hawks as uh, they fight, face another 4v5 situation. Morgana Q will land once again onto Boom Bang, and they make quick work of this inhib turret. Uh, Echo going all the way in. He is going to have a little bit of a root, but still... No damage there, unfortunately, as the only damage really is from the true, uh, from the Kassadin. Last stand here, we'll have Boom Bang falling, we'll have the Kassadin going to try to do what he can. It's going to be Morgana trying to get herself out, but the quick follow-ups from Darius Ult, and Darius turns out big in that fight. And that will be Nexus falling 17-9, to Pikeville turns this game into a series with a 46.8k gold lead above the 37 from the Hawks. Nice KDAs there from Darius. Definitely well played from him. You know, jungle XP, we saw it even two levels ahead, but wasn't able to push that lead ahead for his teammates. And again, the, the situation for him is it's, it's a supportive type jungler, right? Like, he's not going to be dishing damage. He's, his job is to sustain disengage fights. But unfortunately, just IIT's potential to engage was pretty much nullified from their bot lane. No, no way that... Yeah, the the almost three K behind probably like the entire fight. Like probably after the midpoint, like if I just like tried like what? This this stage in the game? Like midway, halfway in the game? It's still just like yeah, pretty much a half item that just continued to build out as the objectives probably grew with the uh with the dragon's lead. So let's get ourselves out of this game. It's gonna be pushing it now onto the uh one and one lead there for Pikeville. Uh, one and one tie, excuse me, series tie between these two teams. And uh... all right, let's get ourselves into the final game and see how it went. Again, shout out to uh, Blitzkrieg for giving me the raffle files. Uh, definitely appreciate it. All right, so let's take a chance in organizing the OBS. It's gonna be. Uh... IIT now on the bot side, actually. With the uh, tech scores now, U Pike won, IIT won, so winner will take away this game and take away the victory. So, taking a quick look here, actually, let me just pause real quick so we can see. We're gonna have IIT with the Plu on. Plu now being used in the game, actually. Um. This is new because we saw True S earlier in the top lane, but now it's going to be Plu in the Mordekaiser top. Blitzkrieg is going to be in with the Zin jungle. Cassiopeia now with Divine playing in the mid lane. Zayn bot lane with Ka Caitlyn Boombang on that Morgana. So looking at IIT wants to try that comp for themselves with the with that two two v two, but uh, Pikeville will respond with Aatrox with the Tylox Elise on the Halal on the Elise, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm mismanaging my words entire, entirely. Tylox on Aatrox top lane, Halal, Elise jungle, Vagar mid lane with I Am No Jedi, Peklav with the Aphelios bot, and Scintilla is our support. So that's going to be a very fun all kills coming out from everywhere uh, for sure. So let's get ourselves started to this game. It's going to be a uh, cleanse there used for cast. That'll definitely help her out. Um, two TPs uh, again being used for Pikeville. They are, they are being holistic with those summoners. They are, they are trying to make sure that they're focusing on every single potential for that five v five. Plu will have a TP of his own. Pikeville does the proper five man extension. No members covering here. Uh, IIT, IIT's definitely got to practice the. Uh, at least for for the big plays like these kind of things, they gotta be consistent on the uh, on the five man approach. Mordecai's rocking out on his trip, on his uh, base right there, but uh, looking like they're gonna be hovering towards the uh, use the lens earlier, at least I think to try to see if they can spot any wards, but it's not going to, I believe. Um, it will be blue jungle started there for them. IIT will have Zin on that red buff. Alrighty. So it could be something internal, you know, between the two teams. I'm not really too sure. I don't I don't talk to the uh, to the captains as much 
just mostly do commentating now, but something probably led into the decision to for to have the roles switched out between Divine and uh, Blitzkrieg. So hopefully IIT's bot lane, you know, able to clutch out with a more solid performance, I hope, but try to do what they can, we'll see. It is going to be Zayn forcing out to level 2 here, a little bit earlier. Is going to have a little bit of harass. Nice stun there. Trap going to follow up with it too. Is going to be doing tons of damage. Nice flash to avoid that Q damage. A little bit more and with a Morgana Ignite could definitely have secured her first blood there. It is going to be though, Plu being stuck in a 1v1 situation is going to have to force himself to go for the avoid flash to avoid the cocoon. But we'll have to settle with uh, being able to walk away to the turret and losing the summoners in return. Zin's going to be running right into the Elise. They should see it coming. It is going to be Blitzkrieg looking at a 1v1 potential. IIT is ready to respond. And Plu lays that Elise to waste with a nice smackdown. So first blood for advantage for Hawks. Well played. Feel your cyber, dude. That's gotta be the most annoying terms, annoying lane in terms of harass. You, you got the plants in your face. You've got the, God knows what happens with the Felios autos in your face like that. Yep, that's not supposed to happen ever in the game. Uh, the, I don't know. It's uh, one of those weird champions that Riot just feels like doing because they feel like doing. Um, gonna have to see what they can take advantage of with the uh, summonerless. Uh, excuse me, with a no flashless Zyra. She is gonna has popped both of her pots. A nice Q gonna be landing there to tr do a little bit of trading, but the uh, damage from Scintilla is enough to have Zayn pop the pot as well, and we'll have him have a little bit of a lead as well. No, Zayn misses the cannon unfortunately, but uh, Elise will be there to respond against Zin's earlier invade and take the Raptors for herself now as well. Cassiopeia Vagar. Not looking looking a little bit worse for wear in terms of just a little bit of the CS. But no, I think it's pretty much even. Dematerializer is being used, in fact. <laughs> Have I heard that sound correctly? Plu and Tylox coming in a bit of a 1v1, but Tylox looking like he comes out on the upper edge of that. Just about. So at least it's going to be about halfway through four. Zin will be a little bit ahead. Um, could have a potential to gank right after if he finishes this, but he would be spot. He would be spotted by a ward. They are pushing themselves up pretty hard. Zin is going to finally come around, but that is a pretty low Morgana. No one dared to help from their side. Spell Shield there is going to keep it away, but the TP coming in as they want to commit what they can. The Ignite will follow through. Boombase is going to be getting that kill, but this st Vagar Cage stun is going to get the Aphelios to kill. And they're going to have to try to focus on who they can. The ult from the Jedi is going to be able to get that Vagar. Jedi is going to have his flash available. Zan still trying to see what damage he can land, but doesn't look like any more. And it's going to be another TP followed by the Aatrox coming into the fight as IIT is scattered. Unfortunately, it looks like they're going to be both Plu and both Caitlyn going to be finally falling. And so almost the uh, full four members will fall from that. And that's pretty tough. Big misplay there from the Hawks is going to cost them uh, a lot of gold loss. Cassiopeia not in that fight either with no TP. Um, it's only going to be able to... Well, she doesn't even get a turret plate either, actually. It's going to be the... Uh, Dragon, uh, mountain drag being being uh, secured there for them. So a lot of advantages already across the board for them. I think two two Plu a little bit ahead here. Uh, yeah, because he got the first blood. That's right. Uh, Sin, you know, Vagar though showing a bit ahead there with a bunch of kills to his name, and so with the Aphelios. You know, so Botlane's going to be unfortunately a little bit ahead. Vagar's going to have that blue buff to keep him keep him sustained. Blue buff here will be spawning as well, looking like they'll probably go for it after. 
Uh, this didn't finish us up that scuttle. Looks like that is the call. I guess we'll just fast forward ourselves through some action here as we kind of reach a point of respite between these two guys, between these two teams, and. Boobank trying to do what he can, put some vision out to River and taste they can catch out that Elise. But it is going to be level 6 being hit pretty soon for the bot lane, so we'll probably see some more fights happening in that stage. Uh, Black Shield taking the... protecting that Caitlyn and getting some decent damage onto that Zyra again. Yeah, in the 2v2, it looks like IIT is, is not shy about it. So again, they gotta make sure that they dot their I's, cross their T's, because that Elise is coming uh, for the Mordekaiser won't be able to get the kill. Blitzkrieg gonna be all the way inside their jungle to try to see what they can get in response. That also will be some good initiate, good initiative from Blitzkrieg though to uh, get himself some camps. It's going to be the Elise going for a solo Rift Herald. She will have some members to help out. I'm sorry, we just missed a kill. So let's see how it happens. It's gotta be more kind of landing a Q, right? <laughs> okay, turret will block it. But the Scintilla will fall right into the, the trap wards, and man, this is why I permaban Caitlyn right now whenever I play League. Like, it's just the most annoying champion, but the damage is gonna be there. Boombay's gonna have to force himself to flash right out, does have to follow up. Can they follow it up? The damage is barely gonna cut through, 24 HP, barely stays alive. Very close. But in all of that chaos, Halal going to be putting down the Rift Herald onto Mordekaiser's turret. And it's going to be getting them a ton of turret plating with that as all the turret plating is up. Plu going to be resolute in trying to stay here though. So we'll be able to clear away that before it does too much damage. Gets Mordekaiser two or three plates there. So that's uh, in their favor for sure. Caitlyn's going to be trying to push the wave all, all the way as she can, but she's not going to be able to get that turret plane, unfortunately, by the time that Desire comes back. In all of this time, though, Divine doing a pretty good job of keeping even with the uh, with the Vagar, but it's going to have to watch out for the Elise. As she does come around, she will spot it. And Zyra chasing Caitlyn all the way around to the edge of the uh, Tier 2. Bot bottom, so being pretty oppressive there for for her. We're kind of doing some severe roaming, trying to see what she can do. Let's just do some fast forwarding. She will have the uh, plant to spot out the tribush ward, and Aphelios and Zyra should be able to get a turret plate of their own, perhaps. But there is going to be a uh, Zin hovering around the area, looking like they just want to go for it right from the start, though it looks like. With Caitlyn coming all the way from around here. This could be a big fight in their favor. It's going to be Zyro coming all the way around. It is going to be having some of that spell immunity. But going to have to flash right back out. Because that damage from those Zyra plants are doing Zin a number. So Summoners definitely feels bad to lose that. Tribush now secured with the control ward. Just to keep any more members onto the bay. It's going to be the Cocoon landing, in fact. Heal not going to be enough. It's going to be the damage spreading out from that Aphelios ult. We'll be able to get to Caitlyn. Unfortunately, I don't think Zyra had the Black Shield available, or maybe just didn't uh, have the knowledge that the Elise was from around there, and I don't think she did because there were no wards in the river. And that's definitely unfortunate, as this will be another Drake that looks like to be secured from uh, you, Pike. Morgana sends a Miracle Q, not going to be able to do the damage, and unfortunately, she's going to have to back. A little bit of displacement between the bot lane here in terms of trying to keep up the tempo that Pikeville is bringing out. Uh... Plu doing his best to try to keep steady with the Aatrox, but the Aatrox is pulling a slight lead in terms of the CS count. And that 1v1 potential is having Tylas come out big. Oh my lord. The 1v1 in fact going to be enough to do it. Zin's going to be flashing. Tylas is going to be flashing all the way out. Gonna have to try to do what he can to walk through. I'm not even gonna look at that bot lane because I don't think I need to. 
looking like the Morgana gets a kill here. Vagar walking all the way around. Get the what? Why did why did he follow through? He could definitely have cut him off. Oh my lord, the miracle run from the uh, from the Vagar <laughs> ends up getting away with it. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm blitzing through this game. I it's apologize again if you're watching this live, but I don't got it in me to, to, to keep doing this. It's going to be Zin coming in here. Going to have the spell cage stopping it, but Blitzkrieg going to be just needing one more. The W will land. He's going to look at that 1v1. In fact, no E available, though, is going to have him be taken very low. Tylock's going to finally finish him off. And Zan looking like another 1v1. The spell shield not going to be there for Morgana, and IIT splintering here in terms of their uh, in terms of the gameplay here, getting getting caught out with a decent amount of CC here to continue to push this gold lead ahead in U Pike's favor. You know, item wise, that feel is just doing just too much damage along with the Zyra plants. Ooh. I wonder if they banned Aphelios the first couple games, which is why he finally got through. Maybe. So, we already saw one Scuttle Fall being used there in the top lane. Uh, Plue, looking like in a dangerous position once again. Try to do what he can to hold on to the... But it's just going to give, you know, more chances. Oh my god, please bot lane. IIT, what are you doing? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you can't really outplay the flash initiation. Also, well, Zan had flash, but I don't think he was expecting it, so unfortunate. Uh, but that looks like it's probably definitely going to be a turret secured there for bot for for uh, their bot lane. And Jedi will be getting a nice one v one there against Divine. We can take a quick look at that. Couple kills here. Push out. Uh, how do you do it? Flash? Oh god. Oh god. And a W lands. Uh, the flash not going to do anything against that. Unfortunately, the damage will be able to follow through. Blitzkrieg going to try to see what he can do to help things out. Uh, and honestly, he's their kind of saving grace member for for the Hawks because he is a little bit ahead from uh, from the least. But a nice assistance there will be able to get him the. Uh, Kill onto the, onto Aatrox finally. Vagar though, waddling his way up there, not going to be able to get himself any kills, but enough to uh, keep the Zin at bay and give time for P Pikefield to secure their third Drake, the Infernal, in fact. So more and more dragons here falling in turn in favor of the uh, Pikefield Bears. I guess this is their mascot. Are there even are there even bears in Kentucky? I I have no clue. I'm my geography sucks. I don't know what lives in what lives in Kentucky. Um, sorry. Anyway, sidetrack conversation. I'll focus back onto the game. It's going to be the second scuttle here. Going to be secured by Blitzkrieg, perhaps. As I is coming around, they might get to read on it. It's actually going to be pretty close. Oh, all right. Spite to secure. Blitzkrieg will get it. Walk right back out. And their Pikeville will go for a switch of their own after having secured that first turret. Leave the uh, Caitlyn once again to try to fend for herself. Morgana's going to try to do what she can. But another ult, but from the Vagar actually barely able to keep Divine just alive. It's going to have him flash right back out. But Zyra is back here to uh, put some pressure. And Zay, uh, excuse me, the Zin gets caught in a cage and he... Uh, Gets caught. I'm not sure what the play was there. If he was just still trying to look for a harass, maybe too confident in the one v one potential in terms of what he think thought he was capable of. That's going to be saying Paul in there to the damage and God damn Desira. It's just so much damage is that makes makes it impossible for for IIT's bot lane to to manage through this. It's definitely going to be a struggle. The uh, damage from Aphelios. Not going to be there to f kill her, but will be enough to take her pretty low. Please don't fall to wolves. I think she, 
can you finish it? Okay, she does get the wolf, thank goodness, but but Aatrox is going to be doing an invade of his own, taking advantage of that Zendeth, giving the red buff to Aphelios, good guy, top lane. Um, IIT trying to do what they can to hold on to this tier 1, but Cassiopeia being so low she is, and with the blue buff to boot, uh, and Caitlyn now finally just walking back at the base, could just be seeing another deja vu if they play it incorrectly, it's going to be more kind of walking right in there, it's going to be the ult follow up from Vega, and yeah, IIT just getting caught out where they should not be, you know, the, the team synergy not, not there in the game 3 as we saw, you know, I, I don't know, maybe that maybe that lane swap was not the jungle lane, jungle mid swap was not the play, you know. I, I, I think Blitzkrieg was fine on, on mid lane with the Kassadin. I mean, we could have played that again, I think. In a setting against Vagar, isn't that good too? Because you can like just ult out of cages, unless they banned it. If they banned it, then, then that's understandable, but... Hmm, I don't know, that's a... I, I don't see the impact really from from the cast as of yet you know a, a, a big crucial fight with that for the two tps here cast not being there that that sets that sets the caitlin apart you know getting caught two or three times in, in, in 2v2s here you know she's not going to have any impact in the game i don't think zin's going to try to send the scuttle to try to do what it can but ooh, okay try to see what they can return here uh, it is going to finally be able to do it one more auto nope it will stand strong, it will stand firm, still no turrets to their name, but Aatrox is there and ready to pay back, forcing the Caitlyn to flash out a valuable summoner that she needs. Uh, ult being channeled, barely gonna tickle to Aatrox, and man oh man. Yeah, this is, these are, this, this game, if you had to describe it in one word, I don't know if it's unlucky or if it's just... It's just that domino effect, I think. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of the results of where we are right now leads to just a lot of these plays building up to this point. You know, the TP plays, the two v twos, the CC stun. You know, we saw it twice. We saw it happen confidently two v two. They took, they lost the fight. Then we saw it a second time when the when Desire flashed to 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 to, to catch out the Caitlyn. So, you know, that's gotta that's gotta come with I think more practice. For it, but hold on a second. Looking like they're trying to see what they can do to catch things out. The Cassiopeia will not gonna be finding any members, and they will instantly be eliminated as they are pinched in a quick, fat second. Divine's ult not going to be able to freeze up any members, and that will be another dragon. Looking like it's looking like it's going to be started. In fact, the fourth dragon to be able to secure the soul for them. And for, uh, as a matter of fact, so Plu going to try to what he can do to uh, finally secure the second turret to bring the uh, turret objectives at least to the same level, but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I think they've got wave clear, I guess, with cast. They've got range, perhaps. Yeah, I'm not sure about these pinch fights, because if you have the advantage with Morgana and Caitlyn, just, just outrange the guys, you know? Like, you can risk, you can risk Pikefield making a dumb mistake, I think. I think, you know, Trying to be so so forceful and in, in trying to find picks when when your members are so low, especially when they they had a they had a majority of this bottom hot, bottom side of the map was in their favor, you know. Like I don't know. That's that's a that's a weird one for me. Doesn't bode too well in terms of the uh, map control that they had for this game three. Yeah, you know, seven kills is going to have her be 2k behind and not even having a second item completed yet for these kind of fights, especially with you, when you have, like, the big objectives like the Baron coming up. Now an Elder as well with the four drakes secured. Four dragons at 23 minutes? Insane. They're going to have, like, so much. And the, good lord, and the Infernal Soul. Uh, so they're going to have all that extra damage, too. And against, like, a Swish, squish comp like the Caitlyn Morgana, like... Black Shield can only do so much, dude. <laughs> uh, that's tough. Yeah, the comeback, I guess, has to be just like trying to force the late game, let Mordekaiser get big, let Cass get big, let Caitlyn have some items, but still trying to find some picks. Divine getting caught. She's going to have to try to commit herself for 1v1. She will be able to get the kill. Caitlyn, though, gets caught in that aftermath and will be eliminated. Going to be pings coming up for Baron as two of the most important damage members are going to be there. Blitzkrieg is going to have a level 12 smite against Elise's, but 
too much vision control and Mordekaiser are really not there for the fight with the Baron already falling under 3k. It's going to have to be like a flash pele if anything if he's sort of risking it. They're going to try it. It is going to beat. Oh my god. Oh, the Mad Lads. Hold on. Alright, so Morgana desperately trying to put a word out there. They don't have any vision on this. She will get caught by the uh, Vagar EQW. But the blind ward spots it at 2k. What a flash play. And Plu to follow up with it. And... Okay, I want to say... Hold on. Who did he... Who did he capture in there? If he captured the Elise, uh, that's a big brain play because then you stop, you you allow that smite to get out. Hold on, I gotta watch this again. This is really one what, what a crazy play for Blitzkrieg Flu. That's actually like such a good good use of the ult synergy to get that away from there. It's gotta be right. No, he, what? Why would you take the Aatrox? Now, if you took the if you took the Elise, you would have the you you could you could 100% guarantee that you get away with the uh, with the smite steal. But man, all right, so that's uh, I guess good and well, it's good they don't get the Baron that Pyfield doesn't get the Baron buff. But it's uh, I mean in that kind of situation, you know, I think I think both Plu and Blitz knew that like we're not getting out of this alive. We just gotta stop them from getting it. So it does do a little bit in terms of delay, um, but gives some signs of life to them, uh, to the Hawks to be able to try to see what they can do. But that dragon, that Elder going to be spawning, you know, eventually will be... If they lose that, then it's pretty much just the uh, the antithesis to the uh, Baron will be the Elder Dragon immolation, whatever, insta-kill, insta-give. If you're low enough, and with the with the infernal soul as well, you know, like come on, you're just asking to be booty blasted in one shot. But hawks are persistent, you know. I'm I'm give them what's due their credit. So unfortunately, you know, I don't think boombang in a this mage support style is a little bit a little bit suspect in terms of just trying to. Be able to help out the members. Divine going nice little couple of dodges there. And these Q dodges, dude. You gotta be more consistent. You gotta practice that more. Um, but uh, da, 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 da. it's gonna be five members there pushing up for it. Plu is gonna finish up the wave and will come back with an ult available. This has gotta be like a. I don't know, like a. If, what does the Mechize for? What? What does Mechize do? I, I'm so confused. Like, isn't it just supposed to be Zonia's if you're going to be first item passive support? Because Mechai's, it only helps with the, if you get the champion kills, right? I mean, I'm, I, I'm so confused. I don't know if the team has analyzed this game yet, but good god. And I speak from this from a support spec perspective, because that's what I mean, but, so I'm, you know, apologies if Morgana's watching this and I'm constantly grilling her, but, like, you, you can't get away with that as a in a team fight set, you gotta be IIT saving grace has to be has to be Morgana trying to like go for Zonias and try to just like displace team fights and split up them up, have Zin be able to dive backline potential and and whatnot. But it's going to be a fight started here. It's going to be the TP channel by Vega to keep the, them healthy. Blitzkrieg trying to see what he can do to get the backline, but he is going to be stopped. Cast will get a couple kills her names, and she does have a de de decent bit of kiting, so she is going to be impactful in the fights, but. Um, Unfortunately, the rest of her members will fall in that in that aftermath. And oh my God, Boombang is struggling here. But he's gonna have the Leandries to assist. We'll need one more tick to do it. But and and the stopwatch, yeah, that'll do it to keep you keep alive, keep her alive. Looking like they will back though after taking the second tier turret no bush to hide them from uh morgana's eyes though and uh you know Kayla's gonna try to do what she can but you know, this this lead now pushed to almost two and a half k so now yeah basically a full item she does have her two now but it's gonna be the quicksilver plus seal for the filio so he's gonna be able to get himself out of any cc from the morgana and will be able to get himself out of mordekaiser ult if if the mordekaiser it chooses but um 
Zonia's there for Elise. Mm, no Zonia's for the Vagar, but I think that's fine. Seeing how he's had pretty good luck with the cage in terms of just zoning away any members. Cast trying uh, Zonia's of her own, but honestly, I mean, maybe just go for. They don't have any. They, mm, they've got yeah, they've got MR so with the boots. So. But I would have just gone straight up Magic Pen, maybe. Just because for both of these fights, she seemed pretty healthy for the most part. She's the least death amount of deaths, you know? Like, unless you're intending to carry, like, late game into mid game, then you go for Zonia's, but, right? Maybe, like, a Rabidon's? I don't know. Anyway, it is going to be an uncontested Elder Track there for these guys, so. Uh, that's going to be huge for them as they are grouping together now towards tier 2. Blue trying to do what he can to get some minions, try to split push a little bit where he can top, but the timing's going to be there for the Hawks as they finally get themselves here. Looking like this tier 2 mid is probably going to go uncontested as the Hawks are not ready to group up for this. And this is looking like it's probably going to be a last stand as, you know, IIT's lanes are pushed out. But I think with this 5k gold lead with the 4 dragons... They gotta be confident just pushing this lead where they can. Unfortunately, Blitzkrieg, Black Shield will not do a lot there for, uh, in terms of negating any kind of damage. What's the Morgana leveling? Pool? What? What the fuck is happening? You do not do that. Why would you? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm tilted from watching this, dude. I, I don't know. You got someone's gotta tell him that. Mid lane, you can mold W Max, right? But I thought for Q, it's always going to be number one that has to be that has to be leveled um, for maximum duration of the stun. All right, anyway, it's going to be a field. Just lay, laying all that damage will instantly take out Zayn from the fight. Now in a four v five situation, I think the Blitzkrieg, you know, not going to be able to do much in this. More Plu coming back into this. The turret is just laying waste to them. One more wave will be pretty much be the one that does it for them. Jesus Christ. Divine's gonna divine and blue have gotta pull out the miracle. Blitzkrieg too, for sure, but uh The damage is there. The pull from like the cast that pull stuff, it's doing work. And the pull like helps from Organa, but in, in a team fight sense, I feel like it's gotta be Q unless unless they instructed him to go that for that first. Okay, so flash for flash trade scares off the cast for sure. It's going to be in hit there. Aatrox oh, does not give a damn. He's going to go all the way in there. Blue is going to ult him to keep him away from the fight. Cleanse to get out of that cocoon. Divine still holding strong, but the damage from Desire ult will probably take out Blitzkrieg. It is going to be having him eliminated from it. Blue still trying to hold on where he can. Uh, but will be finally being taken down. That Elder Drake buff is doing work for them. Divine last stand gets a beautiful four-man ult, but also instantly kerfuffled right by it. And Zan now being the last lady standing, I guess, is going to have, with only Morgana being 20 seconds behind, is going to have to try to pull out the Miracle if they want to be able to get something with it. Let's get out to half speed now. It will be one more wave pushing it, but... Zayn's got to try to do what he can. He's going to be stuck right inside. Will trade one for one. Uh, but their bot lane. Bot lane MVP there for sure. Aphelio, Zyra. Win MVP for the game three for sure. But I think... I think holistically in the entire game... I want to give it to the Darius for the game one-two performance. Because... Uh, yeah, he, he was pretty impactful, I think, in the team fight sense. But the... Uh, but in, 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 uh, something happened in something happened in the uh, game two and three for for IT's bot lane where just things were not able to click between these two guys to to get themselves uh, where they needed to. So again, that's going to be the uh, end of the series with Pikeville taking that win at two one. So GG's to Pikeville, uh, and um, I think that. Unfortunately, we'll uh, put IIT at a one and one for as they go into week as they finish up week as they finished up week two. So, they've got the uh, I believe for the C law group stage that they're required to, in order to proceed, they have to get either a six and zero or a five and one.
So, you know, that one victory already at the, uh, already being expended means that if they want to be able to get past group stage, which, by the way, we've never been able to do, but, you know, just wishful thinking. Uh, they can't afford any more losses. I think uh, last year we went 4-2, and two, I want to say, um, with our, I think, probably the biggest roster that we had last year to offer. So, um, But, you know, hey, this is, uh, it's collegiate. So this, these aren't players on, like, scholarships or anything like that. So we're just here to learn, here to have a good time and try to represent the to school the best way that, that we can so as long as the players take something away from it and as long as we're building a community that's all i care and to provide content i care about that that's going to do it for us tonight appreciate anyone if you did stay by for the stream tonight on this wednesday night but uh, i'm going to upload this onto youtube It'll probably be up a day or two and again appreciate everyone's uh, attention all right everyone Owen Moy, signing off <laughs>